Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bedrock Guide. In the last episode, we worked on this little cave right here and this little hidden potion brewing room. Now, I don't have all of these things filled up with potions and we do need to get that sorted out sometime soon, but not today. We're gonna be kicking off the episode by working on some things that we have said we're gonna do, uh, but have completely forgotten about. The first one is moving this nether portal inside that cave right there. We said we were gonna do it in the last episode and we just completely ran out of time. Portal linking can be a little bit of a pain, so hopefully this goes relatively smooth. Right here at the front of the cave, we've ripped out a small section of what we perfected oh so tediously in the last episode. And we're gonna go ahead and throw our portal in here, uh, but we are gonna go ahead and bury it in the ground. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. And as I mentioned in the previous episode here, this exterior is not done. It's ugly, it's terrible, it's awful, but you're gonna see the portal through the outside of the hill there for the time being until we get around to fixing that up. But we'll go ahead and run this all the way across and all the way down. So unfortunately, the game mechanics only allow for a rectangular or square shape nether portal, but because of some clever masking with different blocks in front of the portal, uh, we can get away with some really interesting shapes and sizes. So I think that will be good for now. Let's go ahead and grab a flint and steel and we'll light it up. Oh, that's very nice. I really like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the blocks that we dug out and we're going to fill it back in. After a few minutes and a creeper explosion, hey, that's what we've come up with. I'm really happy with that. It looks kind of like this portal has cracked through the wall of the cave. Let's go on through. It should take us to the correct nether portal on the other side. And there we go. The other thing that we promised to do that we totally forgot to do is build an input for this guy right here. This lever will activate the gold farm, which is all well and fine until we get down to our trident killer and want to activate it down there. We don't have a way to do that just yet, so we need to do that. And maintenance project number two is complete. We've got our trident killer switch right here, and we've got our gold farm torch tower switch right here. So if we flip this up, it's going to invert this entire torch tower, which ends up right here, and it will invert the signal on this redstone line. And that redstone line leads all the way up to our clock, which powers the gold farm. Stop that. So let's give it a little test here. We'll go ahead and turn that on and we'll turn that on. And any moment now we should see piglins dropping down into our trident killer and there they come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad that we can power this from the ground level now. We'll go ahead and turn this off and we can leave this on until all of the piglins are eliminated. And there you go. That's why you want to separate your trident killer lever and your farm activation lever because you do still have some residual piglins that do fall down while the farm is shut off. It's just the way it works. So you want to have those on separate levers. And the other thing that we said we were gonna do, this shulker box right here is the input shulker box for our coal that goes down to this little super smelter right here that receives all of the gold swords from the gold farm and then converts them to nuggets and sends them back into our storage. All of the things that we said we were gonna do, we can go ahead and check them off the list. And the last thing before we get into our project for today is this little starter path and a few pillars that we have added over here to kind of get an idea for what the rest of this pirate treasure cave is gonna look like. It's gonna be very intermixed with the blackstone, the basalt, some of the dead coral. We actually have to go get some more of this because we are completely out. And I thought it would be nice to use mainly gravel, but we'll again intermix some andesite and some regular stone as our natural path because I don't want an actual path made out of like wood. I want it to be as if this path is walked so often, it's kind of just worn it down into gravel for the most part. But this is not complete. This is very, very much in the early stages of development. And it's probably something I will mainly do on live streams. We might do a little bit of work on it here here and there in videos, but be sure to check out my Twitch channel if you want to see some more of the progress on this. Okay, on to the project for today's episode. We are going to be building a fully automatic chicken cooker with a toggle switch that allows us to collect eggs as well. We've started out 
by digging a hole in the ground too deep. And this hole is 10 blocks by three blocks. And we've actually dug out a little extra space because these are just markers for the edges of the build. The entire contraption will fit between these two blocks, which makes it an eight by three contraption. But we're here. And what we're gonna do is start by placing down a sticky piston right here with a block on top, just like that. This sticky piston will extend and we'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. And then we can place a temporary block right here and a permanent block right there. Go ahead and break that one and then do the same thing on the other side. And then likewise back here, temporary block, permanent block. We'll go ahead and break that one and temporary block, permanent block and break. Then I'm gonna grab these two levers that I've got right here and throw one down there and one down there and they don't do anything just yet but they will shortly. Completely not necessary at all, but I went ahead and threw down planks all the way down here just so this area looks nice. It's never gonna be seen. It is a behind the scenes kind of maintenance area just in case we need to get down here for the redstone. But you know what? We got the wood. Let's make it look good. We're gonna grab another sticky piston and throw it down right there, right underneath the block with the lever on it. And we're gonna toss one redstone block right there attached to the sticky piston. And then on this side, we'll grab some redstone dust and toss one down right there. Now, what this is gonna do when we go up here and flip the lever, it's going to push that sticky piston down. It's going to power this sticky piston and push this block up by one. You say in Blue Jay, why in the world are you doing that? Well, this part of the build is not exactly 100% necessary, but it is nice and it is a like 0.02 second time saver. Let's say we drop a shulker box right here. This is what's gonna collect our chicken. If we flip that lever, boop, the shulker box pops up into the dropped item form and we can pick it up and go about our business. We could use a button here, but I like the idea of leaving this floor flush with the blocks around it because this is going to be floor level for the building. And I like the symmetry of having two levers and this one absolutely has to be a lever. So we opted for that choice on this side. So we've got a temporary shulker box right there. We will get a permanent one a little bit later, but next we're gonna go ahead and put a, a hopper right here out of the back of the shulker box and a hopper facing down into that hopper. And then one more back box behind it just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and drop a slab. It has to be a slab, not a full block, right on top of this hopper right here. And this is where our chickens are gonna stand when they hatch. And then we'll place a temporary block, temporary block. We'll break that one really quick. And then we'll take one of our two dispensers and place one right here so that the hole is facing forward. You can't see it, but you do see the eyeballs. The mouth is right below this slab and it will fire out the eggs and they will hatch right here on this little slab. Then we need to make sure to take a hopper and place it directly underneath the dispenser and one more directly behind the dispenser. And then directly underneath this hopper right here, we're gonna crouch and place down a block right here, here, and here so that we've got a three wide platform and then we're gonna bring it back three more so it is a four by three but then we're gonna go over here to this corner and we're gonna pop this out it is absolutely important 100 has to be a transparent block of some sort that will not carry a redstone signal through it but is okay with redstone going on top. Basically, this block can't be powered. Then we're gonna take a comparator, place it out of the back of this hopper right here, followed by a repeater. This block right here is going to be pushed up by a sticky piston when we are in the cooked chicken mode and pulled down when we are in the egg mode. So we'll leave that there for the moment and we'll place a redstone dust right here, followed by a repeater set to three ticks, one redstone dust and a repeater set to four ticks. And on the opposite side, one redstone dust, another redstone dust, and a repeater set to one tick. Then we're just gonna take our planks and fill in the gaps, fill in the gaps, and drop an observer with the smiley face facing the repeater here and facing the repeater here. Are you tracking so far? If not, leave a comment in the comment section. I'm happy to help, happy to explain, or join up with my Discord. And you know, just make sure to like and subscribe as well. Those things do help. That would just be amazing. As with all of my redstone tutorials, don't worry, even though this seems like a lot, I will explain how every piece of it works together in the final part of the build. 
So stick around for the end of the video. There's only a couple of things left for this circuit to be fully functional. The first thing is to drop a solid block right here, and that completes the circuit for our dispenser to fire the eggs. Then we're gonna need the ability to cook the chickens once they grow up into adults, which requires another dispenser. So we're gonna go ahead and place a solid block right here and a dispenser right there. This dispenser is where our lava bucket is going to fire periodically in order to cook the chickens. Now this gap doesn't look very very wide, but a baby chicken can stand on this little slab without touching the lava. It will not affect their hitbox. They will not start cooking. They will only cook when they grow into adults. All we would need to do to make this fully functional is place a block right here, since there's no piston underneath there just yet to push this one up. If you wanted to leave it at that, this thing's basically ready to go. But I wanted the ability to toggle between cooked chicken and eggs. So that's the next part of the circuit that we're gonna be working on. In order to make this circuit work, we need to place a sticky piston right here. And just keep in mind that it's very, very important that you lay it out exactly like this because when we drop this redstone block right here and say we were to place a piece of redstone dust right here and it becomes powered, if there were any hoppers directly next to the redstone dust, uh, they will lock as well and not allow items to flow through. So just be careful with that. So out of this plank right here, we're gonna go two blocks ahead and then we're gonna drop a repeater right here. When we flip this lever, it's gonna push the block forward and power that repeater. But we'll go ahead and turn that off for the moment. Then we're gonna run another line that goes in a little bit of a U shape around the rest of the build. This is why it's very important that this is a transparent block. It, we're about to show you why. So we're gonna run a redstone dust right here, here, and here. We can go ahead and break that block and then we'll make sure that we have an upward facing sticky piston that is directly underneath that center block. And here is the kicker right here. We're gonna go ahead and place down a redstone torch. And if we were to have this torch underneath a solid block, this would power this redstone dust and keep this active. And that's exactly the opposite of what we want. We just want that whole thing to be shut off completely whenever this is in egg mode. Then you wanna locate this back hopper right here and place a solid block down right here with redstone dust, 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 and one redstone torch out of the side of that block right there. This redstone torch is powered off, which means that anything can flow through this little hopper right there. And by anything, I mean eggs. They will drop through this hopper into this dispenser. And because the hopper directly below it is unlocked and this circuit is shut off. This won't fire, but it will allow eggs to pass through into our storage. However, if we go ahead and flip this lever, you'll watch this go forward. That goes up, activating this circuit, and then it goes around and depowers this torch and depowers this line, which depowers that block, which then repowers that torch and locks that hopper, which means no items can flow through that hopper and they are stuck inside of this dispenser until this redstone circuit fires all the eggs and hatches them here in this little hatching chamber. In order for this farm to be fully AFK, we need a place for our adult chickens that will lay the eggs indefinitely to stand. So we will go up two hoppers directly down into the hopper that feeds into our dispenser. And then we'll go back to just like this. And then we'll go forward to just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and box it in. We're gonna make sure to cover all of the corners so that no chickens can accidentally glitch through the sides. And then we're gonna build this up high enough that they can't fly out or walk out either. And then directly on top of these hoppers, we are going to crouch right here and place a carpet carpet, 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 and carpet. And just as a general safeguard, so we or other mobs do not fall in here with our chickens, we're gonna cover them up with trapdoors. And then all we really need to do now is start filling in the rest of this frame. And technically we don't really have to back here. We might actually leave that open in case we need to get in there, but at least get the front half here. And maybe we'll build this floor out just a little bit so we have a place to stand until we get our building up and around it. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and toss in a a stained glass here and a stained glass here. They do need to be full blocks. They cannot be panes. You cannot put things like fences or bars in front of this because the eggs could hatch the chicken on the opposite side, uh, which would allow them to run away. We can't have that, can we? So all we have to do now is load this thing up with chickens. And if I'm not mistaken, somewhere over here, I think we've got some chicken eggs. Hey, there's the jackpot. Let's just take all of these and we'll go ahead and open up our trap doors and stand on the wrong side of them for a second. We'll come over here and we'll start tossing eggs. When you throw an egg like so, 
Hey, perfect. Great example. There is a one in eight chance that a chicken, a baby chicken, will spawn from these eggs. My goal is to get about 50 chickens in this top chamber here because that will give us a spawn rate of one egg every six seconds or so. Now, keep an eye on how many chickens you put in here because they do cram together and it does affect their pathfinding. If you have way too many chickens in here, it could start lagging your server. So don't be that guy. Don't make all your server mates mad by lagging the server, okay? So we've got eight so far and we gotta let those guys grow up and we don't have any more eggs to hatch anymore with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close that off and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna make sure that this is indeed in egg mode. So it is in full cooked chicken mode right now. We'll go ahead and flip the lever. Up means eggs. We'll figure out a way to mark that here in just a little bit. And now anytime a... And now whenever those chickens grow up to be adults and they start laying eggs, they will all come into our shulker box here. And we're gonna replace that temporary shulker box with a brown shulker box. I think that'll look nice because it will blend in with the floor. And then we can drop it on down right there where it will start collecting eggs as soon as these guys grow up. So we've got a little bit of waiting to do, but we could actually go get some seeds to accelerate this process. But if we didn't do that, uh, it takes about 20 minutes for baby chickens to grow up into adult chickens. And then from there, it's between five to 10 minutes before a chicken will lay an egg. Uh, so before that actually happens, we need one more thing. And I do believe I have a shulker box full of this stuff already. We're talking about lava buckets. That's perfect. We only need one. So we'll grab that and we'll toss this right here in this side dispenser. So now all we do is wait. Yeah, in thinking about this, I've actually got a way better plan than sitting here waiting for 30 minutes to an hour. Hey, let's get a adult chicken. Can, can, can you take the... Can, can, can you take the seeds? No? Oh, 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 oh! Okay. We're getting some action here. That's okay. Okay. All right, now you two. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Perfect. I don't know how we're gonna count them all, but we're just going to assume it's around 50. Let's be very careful. Let's count how many we have so far. I think we've probably got about 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, we've got 11 adult chickens. Let's get one more and that'll make 12. And that right there is what 50 full grown adult chickens that are ready to lay eggs looks like right there. Uh, it's pretty jam packed. I don't know that I would wanna go any more than that. I'm sure it would be fine. Prowl won't mind a little lag. He is the lag master anyway. But we have been running this for a little while and I do have it on egg mode right now. So we are collecting eggs at a pretty good clip. There's seven in there right now. We should be getting another one anytime. And there we go. There's an eighth egg. And you might see in the bottom corner here, 64 plus 15 cooked chicken. This is in just a little bit over an hour of testing. Not screaming fast, but that's actually not too bad considering we don't have to go mining for coal or dip into our bamboo supply. It's all 100% automatic fueled by lava that never runs out. We already have an adult chicken in here and he's ready to cook, but we're not gonna do that just yet. Before we do anything flipping levers or cooking chickens, I do wanna go through and explain in totality how this farm works. I get comments all the time about how people appreciate more than just the place this block here, place this block there, the explanation of why the redstone works the way it does. So that's what we're gonna do now. This lever is not powered. So this sticky piston is retracted and that redstone block is not powering anything over here. So by default, this redstone torch is on because there's nothing to turn it off. And because this redstone torch is being powered by this line from from that redstone torch, this is powered off by default, which means this hopper is completely unlocked. That's important because if we come up here and we look at our chickens, they are standing on top of that carpet on top of hoppers. And when they lay an egg, the egg will flow through the hopper to the middle hopper, which will then drop down into this hopper and that hopper and on into the dispenser. Because this circuit is completely deactivated, it's not gonna do anything. The egg will not have a chance 
or option to be fired out of the dispenser, and so it will just drop straight through into this hopper below, which is already unlocked, and send it on into our shulker box. So you can see in the couple minutes that we've been doing this, we've already almost got two stacks of eggs. That's not too bad. Then if we go over here, we'll flip this lever, and the next time an egg spits out of that dispenser, boom, boom, that chicken is fried. It must be from Kentucky, and it drops down into our shulker box. Let's talk about how this works. So you can see I've turned the lever off. The redstone block is retracted. If we flip the lever, it goes forward and powers that repeater, which powers that redstone line, which then powers this sticky piston. And because this sticky piston is powered, it will push this block up and complete this circuit so that the firing mechanism will actually work. But before we talk about this, let's go back down here. Because of the way that sticky pistons work, or regular pistons for that matter, they can actually carry a redstone signal through them. So because this is powered and the piston is powered, this redstone torch turns off which depowers this line and removes power from that block, which allows this redstone torch to go back to its default state of being powered, which will lock this hopper below the dispenser. So before the dispenser did not have a chance to fire the eggs, now the hopper does not have a chance to pull the eggs from the dispenser. So they just sit up there until the circuit up top here is ready to go. So here's what happens. Eggs drop down like they did before. And then when an egg reaches this bottom hopper right here, this comparator will say, hey, there's an egg in there. It will power this repeater, which will power this block, and then it will power this redstone line right here, which will power that repeater. And when this observer detects that this has gone on and off, it will actually fire the dispenser twice. And the reason that works is because when this state is changed to on, it sends out a quick one tick pulse to power this block, to power that dispenser and shoot out whatever egg is in there. And then when this turns back off, the state will be detected by the observer again, which will send another quick pulse to power this block and power the dispenser on the other side of that block. You can see it happening right here when an egg goes through into that hopper. There you go. You saw the two quick ticks right there. That means that this dispenser will fire twice. So we'll go ahead and plug that back up so it actually can fire. So here's where this little line comes into play. Let's say, for example, this hopper has more than one egg in it or more than two or three or four or five, whatever. It's not really gonna matter unless that dispenser is completely full, which I don't think will ever happen because of the way that this is designed, it shouldn't happen. But let's say for argument's sake, it was. If this becomes backed up, then this comparator is never going to shut off if you only have this side, which means it's only going to fire the dispenser once and then it's just going to lock up and, and nothing's going to happen. So this block will power this redstone line, which will send a signal back into this comparator, which will shut it down temporarily, allowing it to redetect that there's an item in there, send another pulse through, power that, and send the items through the dispenser. Again, we're never gonna have that problem because it's just designed that way. It's never gonna back up. But this circuit is good for things like trash cans where you're gonna send a bunch of items through into lava. Just keep this circuit in mind. Then from here, the redstone dust carries the signal on into this repeater. Same deal as over here with this observer. This will double tick this block right here, which will power on and off that dispenser, which turns on and off the lava. And with that, that is the full explanation of how this chicken farm works. Every aspect of the redstone mechanics explained. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comment section below or be sure to join up with my discord. I'm always happy to have a conversation and we do have some lovely people there as well that are way smarter than me, to be honest. And they're always very willing to talk about this stuff as well. But guys, I think that's going to do it for today. We have a completed project, sort of. This is actually going to be combined with something else I've got in mind and a nice, cool looking building to go over here on the cliffside overlooking our pirate ship and our pirate cove. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like and a comment in the comment section. Tell me something that you learned today that you didn't know before. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video or any other videos just like this. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in in the next one.